almost everybody's deficient in B vitamins in my testing. Uh, and I, I think the reason for that is, again, B vitamins mitigate stress. Mental stress and physical stress. You need B vitamins for proper mental functioning. In my work in orthomolecular psychiatry, most people who have imbalances are very B vitamin deficient, particularly B3, B6, and B12 and folic acid. So it is definitely a, a problem out there. And I think the problem comes from what I was talking about before is the stress that's increasing is having us use up way more B vitamins than we 100 years ago would have used. So what was seeming normal is no longer sufficient. So kind of think that way. Uh, then there are also genetic differences. Uh, literally, some people need six times more B vitamins as other people. This particularly shows up in uh, the orthomolecular psychiatry work, where a lot of people have mental problems, and they're really quite B vitamin deficient, and they need truly six times more than a, normal, a person who's fairly normal. It's a, it's, a, it's a genetic and physiological thing. But I'm going to hold on that. I'm just telling you there's a range here that there is no like one set dose. Now, the topic that comes up most is, well, do I need B12? And quite frankly, everybody who's vegan or live food needs B12. Now, do you need it right away? Well, that depends. 80% after six years of vegans' live food become deficient in B12. Well, that's quite a statement, because that's a pretty high percentage. Now, there's another side of that is 40% of meat eaters are B12. 40% of meat eaters? are B12 deficient. Now, we have to look at the range of what that means. So at 200 nanograms, that's what we're talking about. But optimal B12 is 400 to 450. So what am I saying? I'm saying when you're talking about optimal B12 for optimal health, optimal function, the people, there's a lot more deficiency. Every people following what I'm saying. So when we're talking 200, that's like the world standard, 150 to 200. But we're talking 400 or 450, well, that's a whole different standard, and that's going to give you your optimal protection in a lot of ways. Uh, I'm sorry, it's your blood level. Okay. Now, I don't know if they have it here, but... There's a thing called MA methylmalonic acid test. The most, do they have it here? Yeah. Okay. That's the most accurate way to get a B12. How is this called? MMA, methylmalonic acid. And that gives you your best accuracy because in your blood test, you get B12 analogs. They look like B12, but they're not really active B12 human act of B12. So that being said, uh, everybody's deficient or going to be deficient in B12. Some people, it takes longer. A, I write about a person who was 30 years before he got B12 deficient, and in his 80s became senile in a day, stopped walking, couldn't function at all. What happened? Somebody checked his B12 and it was zero. They gave him a shot of B12 and he was pretty good. And after a week, got another shot. And he's functioning again. So people handle B12 differently. And I'm not going to go through the whole hepatic and tarot loop. But we absorb B12, just get the idea, back into our system from our large intestine. And how well we absorb it 
tells you how long, when you're going to get deficient, so to speak. But just get, after six years, 80% of vegans are going to get deficient. It kind of says the story. Now, in adults, it's pretty reversible. In children, not so reversible. Kids can die in Damona. There's a, a community down there, and they weren't, they were into the soy and all that, but they weren't giving B12, and they did have several children die of B12 deficiency. They've since reversed their position on that, but it wasn't very good because their teaching was you don't need B12, you just do the natural vegetarian, vegan diet, no problem. But there is a problem. So, uh, as a grandfather in the discussion and as a, you know, a parent, although my kids are a little bit old, you know, and they're in their 40s, but the point I'm making is that everybody needs B12. Period. We need, you know, we look at the homocysteine as an issue. I'm not going to get into all the details. I just want to make the point that if you're going to do live food and you're going to do vegan, and also if you're just even a meat eater, you run the risk. <laughs>